Hi folks, Erin Relford here, back with another video on how to get involved in tech. I'm seeing a lot of questions where people are like, well, how do I even get started? And it just so happens that I missed a comment made on my channel about a year ago where someone thanked me for doing a specific topic, but then said, hey, can you talk about educational resources? So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's jump right in. So the obvious choice, you're already here. YouTube is a great example of just trying to get a feeler for what type of tech education I wanna pursue. If you haven't already identified what skills you're actually good at, um, it's a good idea to like dip your toe in the water and just explore what is out there based on people who have hopped on YouTube and talked about their own experiences. I've done so in talking about IT audit, which actually garnered a lot of reviews. I was like, wow, I didn't know so many people were interested. Anyway, to that effect, I will say, start with YouTube. That's what I did when I wanted to explore the space of what does program management look like in tech. And it just so happened there was a great video out there with a guy talking about um, his recruiting people for program management and what they look for. That was a great resource for me. Another example of just dipping your toe in, in the water just to get a splash is I took a course at UCLA uh, for AWS Solutions Architect. I thought I definitely wanted to be involved in that space. Cloud is very big in a lot of realms in terms of cybersecurity, um, development, uh, DevOps. It, there's, a, there's a lot involved in cloud. And uh, so I take the class. The class lasts, oh, I don't know. I believe it was three. No, it was like four, to four months that this course lasted. And at the end of this course, I knew I didn't want to do AWS. <laughs> Like, uh-uh, don't get me wrong. It's actually like pretty cool how to utilize AWS, but a solutions architect, not for me. It's not what gets me like all amped up. Also, side note, I've seen a lot of debate on, oh, do what you're good at, don't do what you're passionate about. Folks, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna like detract from that narrative and say this. If you're not passionate about something, you are not gonna get up every morning or uh, after work and pursue these things if it doesn't like run through your bloodstream that this is something that I need and want, right? So yeah, it's cool to do things that you're great at, but how do you know that you're even great at them if you don't like try, right? If you're not enthused about something and you're gonna have that track and that energy to get up every morning to go do it, well then what are you what are we talking about? So like follow your passions, folks. Follow your passions. Okay, first up, colleges and universities. Yes, a lot of us are no longer pursuing the degree track. A lot of us are. If four to six years of education is not for you or financially not for you, then great, you have come to the right place. Um, let me offer you this. Colleges and universities are doing a lot of different um, hybrid learning these days. So there are a lot of certificate programs that you can involve yourself in. Some of them range anywhere from six months to two years, but they carry just as much weight in the industry or in the work field anyway. And it really just depends on how you apply them. But they're great like training grounds. So pursue certificate programs or even um, UCLA has what they call, oh God, what is it called? It's called, it's called uh, UCLA Extension. And it's basically their continuing education. So just in the example that I gave with AWS, um, I did not want to take a full deep dive down that road. And so it allowed me a four month course to take uh, got my feet wet and decided this was not for me and I could bounce, but I still get the credit, right? Two, another source of education and training is organizations. So if you know that you wanna be involved in cybersecurity, you know you wanna be involved in IT audit, um, you know you wanna be involved in privacy, there are driving organizations who will have training workshops and continued learning. Um, ISACA and IAAP, Sorry, is it IAPP? IAPP, um, the International Association of Privacy Professionals, they absolutely offer a bunch of training and resources for you to take advantage of. So think about organizations when you're thinking about what field you wanna be in and how to get started. Those are great grounds to uh, basically like water your seed. Number three, online courses, man. 
these weren't available <clears throat> when I was coming up in tech and like in school, but now like the world over, like there is no excuse for you not to get this training. It's just a matter of what do you want to do? And so there are several websites that I have personally used. Um, there are far more out here than, than what I'm gonna present to you today, but just know that not all of them carry the same quality. It's best to read the reviews, um, read the syllabus for each of these online courses because some of them are super cheap, uh, you know, anywhere from like $10 to $30 to thousands of dollars. So just be mindful to do your homework first before you get involved in any of these. So uh, the first of online courses, LinkedIn Learning. God, there's so much free learning on LinkedIn Learning. Like, uh, I don't care if it's Excel, uh, you're trying to understand spreadsheets, you're trying to understand podcasting. There are so many workshops available on LinkedIn Learning that that is, that is absolutely a place that you should peruse to see if there's anything free that you can pick up in terms of skills. Also Coursera, I hear a lot of great things about Coursera. I've only taken one course there and I didn't see anything wrong with it. Um, you know, if, if they have something that you like or they have a instructor that you really like, Coursera is a good idea. My personal favorite is Udemy. I don't know if, you're, if I'm saying that right. It's U-D-E-M-Y, Udemy. But I love this website. I go to this particular website for all of my security trainings. It's a bunch of them out there and some really good ones. I've also had some really not good ones either. So uh, like I said, read the reviews. And if and I will say one thing about Udemy, if you actually didn't like the course or thought the instructor was terrible or they didn't offer you what they said they were, uh, Udemy is really good about refunds. And then just a few more. So there's also EDX. Um, I like EDX because it offers courses from Harvard, Yale, a bunch of others. Um, you know, writing is a love of mine and a hobby. And so I've taken a few writing courses there. All well and good. They're basically college courses with the same syllabus and uh, sometimes free. Udacity. I am currently taking a ML learning course on Udacity right now offered through Girls in Tech. Uh, so grateful for the opportunity and loving the experience. So I also am going to recommend Udacity as well. Podcasts and websites. So there is something to be said for uh, HBR, Harvard Business Review. The talks that come out of some of these podcasts are so uh, nutritional in terms of educational value. They are typically putting you onto things that the industry is talking about at the moment or things that you need to be aware of that are coming down the pipeline. Um, I actually tune into TechCrunch as well as uh, Wired. Um, I subscribe to Wired and read all of their articles just because there's so much um, good conversation in terms of like the metaverse and what's uh, where tech is headed in the next 18 months. And it's exciting to see that world kind of open up in terms of VR, AR. And so that is where I am getting my information. So just to recap, colleges and universities definitely offer certificate programs as well as continued education. Be sure to look at all of your local universities to see if they offer something that could be affordable or at least in your price range. Uh, don't be afraid of online communities uh, or online community workshops such as Udemy, Udacity, Coursera, and LinkedIn Learning, which is a personal fave. They offer uh, different opportunities at different price ranges and easily accessible. Also, don't forget about your organizations and the trainings and workshops that they may offer as well. Uh, I keep leaning on ISACA as well as IAPP because those are the top organizations in my industry. And so those are the ones that I follow anytime that I wanna go and get CPE credits. Uh, when, you, when you become certified, you have to pursue CPE credits or continued learning uh, every year. And so that's how I pursue those. So I will say those are, are of quality. And then lastly, don't forget about your podcasts and websites and blogs and, and et cetera, just for uh, what's breeding, what's new, what's happening in the community or the industry that you are in. As mentioned, podcasts and websites can be great too. Uh, my personal fave being HBR, Harvard Business Review. So that's it for today. I, again, just wanted to do a really quick video just to kind of explore the possibilities of where the education is if you don't want to do a four-year degree. And I'm not saying that four-year degrees don't have value anymore. They absolutely do if you know what you want to do. But if you don't, all of these areas are good opportunities to get your feet wet and try. So uh, I will see you later and uh, check out 
the rest of my videos. Thank you so much, guys, for subscribing. We are past 500 sub subscribers. I think I'm doing a fine job here. A fine job. I'll see you guys later. Bye.